Freewell has just released some new lenses and filters for the Pocket 2. The two we're going to be talking about today are the anamorphic lens and the wide angle lens. These lenses can be purchased together as a kit or individually if you just need one or the other. We'll find out if these lenses are for you, if they're worth picking up, and which one would make the most sense for you. Freewell reached out to me and asked me if I would want to review some of their new lenses and filters they had. I've used Freewell filters in the past on some of my other cameras and drones, but this filter has a new feature that I would love to see come to their other filters and lenses in the future. Spoiler alert, it's swappable ND filters, but more on that later. As always, the words here are completely my own, Freewell has not told me to say or not say anything in particular, and they're not seeing this video before I post it. Getting straight into the most important part of these filters is the price. The anamorphic lens on its own retails for about $59.99 USD, and the wide angle lens retails for also $59.99 USD. These lenses are part of a kit, however, and can be purchased together like this for $99.99 USD. That's quite a lot of money, so let's dive into some comparisons and specs and see if these are right for you. A quick price comparison to other Pocket 2 lenses, the Ulanzi 1.33x anamorphic lens sells for about $40 for the Pocket 2. I have not used this particular lens, but I've used the Ulanzi 1.33 anamorphic drone lens for my Mavic Air 2, and that lens is very stylized and aggressive, but it gives you a softer image with more aggressive flares, but it can't be used with the ND filters. So if you're looking to save some money and you want a really stylized choice, maybe look into that lens. I've had that on my Mavic drones and I actually made a video about it and I will leave a link to that in the description below. Another comparison is the Freewell anamorphic lens for the Pocket 1, which sells for $30, but it isn't compatible with the Pocket 2 and it doesn't have access to the ND filters, just like the Ulanzi doesn't have access to those ND filters either. Purchasing the DJI wide angle lens will... one moment. Purchasing the DJI wide angle lens separately from the creator kit will cost you about 49 USD. And it's a great lens, but it does lack the ND filter compatibility. But it's also included in the creator kit, so you may have this lens already. The anamorphic lens is pretty unique on its own, but if you have a drone with an anamorphic lens, you can use this lens to match your anamorphic drone footage. If you stuck around my channel for any length of time, you know I have a soft spot in my heart for anamorphic video. But Typically on smaller cameras, if the lens has too aggressive of a wide angle stretch, this will result in your footage looking kind of soft and just too overdone with the anamorphic effect. This anamorphic lens has a de-squeeze factor of 1.15 times, which is noticeable when you're watching your edited footage back, but it's not overbearing and you don't have to trade the anamorphic look to your footage for quality. One of my favorite parts of anamorphic footage are those blue flares you get when you point this lens directly at a light source. If you have multiple light sources in your frame, you'll have multiple lens flares though. So be aware of how many bright lights are in your shot, and it's important to properly frame this if you wanna get the best flares possible. The flares on this lens are apparent, and they are well controlled for such a small lens. Other small anamorphic lenses I've tested in the past have resulted in kind of a smearing look, and the flares would be fuzzy or sloppy, but the flares here are pretty well maintained and controlled. They tend to have a curve around the edge of the screen though, so if you are filming certain light sources and have a really long flare, there's going to be little curves at the end of the flare. That's being pretty picky for an anamorphic lens this size. True anamorphic lenses are hundreds or thousands of dollars, so comparing them to this lens isn't totally fair, but at the same time, this is the most expensive anamorphic lens for the pocket too, so I think it's okay to be a little critical here. That is something to be aware of, and it isn't a deal breaker for me, but use your best judgment when it comes to the flares for your personal taste. The aspect ratio is another reason I love anamorphic footage, and the footage here will look distorted while you're filming it, but after you process it with your editing software, the footage will look natural and have the correct aspect ratio. The 1.15D squeeze isn't as aggressive as a traditional anamorphic lens that has 1.33 or 1.8 or higher, but since this lens attaches to your lens, having an aggressive squeeze would make your footage look soft and distorted here. I don't mind the minimal squeeze if it means my image won't be distorted. 
Moving on to the wide angle lens, the first thing I thought when I heard of another wide angle lens is I already have a lens that I bought in the creator kit, so why do I need another lens? Well, the neat part about the wide angle and the anamorphic lens is that you can attach the included ND filters to the back of the lens to bring the overall exposure down of your shots without adjusting your camera settings. These are the only two lenses for the Pocket 2 that have the concept of these stackable ND filters. There are four included ND filters in this pack, an ND8, 16, 32, and 64. And again, they can be used with both the anamorphic and wide angle lenses. This is great if you're shooting with the 180 degree shutter rule to achieve that natural looking motion blur in your shots without adjusting your camera settings. For a quick comparison of how these DJI and Freewell wide angle lenses compare to each other, the Freewell lens appears to be slightly wider than the DJI wide angle lens, but the image of the Freewell is also slightly softer around the corners when compared to the DJI lens. The image is still usable, but it's slightly softer and making that field of view a little wider makes sense that it would be softer compared to the DJI lens. If you have straight lines and edges in the frame, you'll notice that the edges on the frame distort a little bit more on the Freewell lens as well. The DJI isn't as wide, so there isn't as much distortion. It makes sense that the wider lens has more distortion. It seems like where it's wider than the DJI lens, there's the most distortion. However, the ability to use ND filters with the Freewell lens is enough for me to overlook the slightly softer image and distortion, but that's something you're gonna have to decide for yourself. To attach an ND filter to your lens, you'll have to take the lens off your camera and carefully place one of these small ND filters onto the back of the lens. A nice part of these filters is that they're magnetic, so there's no snapping or screwing the filters on. They magnetically clip into place. One thing you have to be really careful of though is that you don't smudge the lenses while you're handling them. There are magnetic tabs on the top and bottom that you can hold on to, but they aren't very large, and if you have large hands, it's going to be even harder to put these little tiny ND filters on the back of your lenses. And another thing you have to be careful of is to not smudge the inside of the lens itself while you're putting the ND filter on. Again, if you have larger hands, this is probably going to be more difficult for you, but uh, for me, holding onto the lens was easy, but putting the small ND filter onto the lens without smudging it was kind of difficult. If you have soft footage or your footage has little dark spots, that probably means you have a smudge on either the inside of your lens or the ND filter. So it would be just beneficial to take your time and make sure you don't smudge these while you're using them. Another nice feature of these lenses is that they're both recognized by the Pocket 2 and will show an alert when connected to the camera. This is nice because when you turn the camera on or off, typically the lens rotates into the gimbal to protect it. If the camera doesn't know about the lens, the camera will knock the lens off the front and possibly damage the camera's glass. Since the camera recognizes these lenses, the camera stays pointed out so you can easily remove the lens when you turn the camera off. And the best part is that after removing the lens, the camera will turn around to its normal position to protect the lens. This is how the DJI wide angle works and I'm happy to see that functionality brought to these Freewell lenses. While the lenses are expensive, I have a feeling that they are this price because they have the ability to use the ND filters and the ND filters are included. So they are much more versatile in lighting conditions and if you're going to use a wide angle or an anamorphic before that didn't have these filters, you would have to wait for certain lighting conditions or not adhere to the 180 degree shutter rule and you'd have to crank your shutter speed up to get the proper exposure. There were trade-offs with each of the other lenses, but with these lenses, all those sacrifices are eliminated, but you have to pay to have those features. These lenses and filters are high quality and they should be for this price point. If you can't tell, I have a really soft spot in my heart for anamorphic footage and ND filters that can be attached to filters. I love this functionality and I can't wait to see this brought to more filters in the future. To push this idea a little further, I would be really interested to see ND filters that can be used on their own and just stack other filters on top of it. So if you buy an all day ND filter pack, 
you could use the anamorphic lens or the wide angle lens on top of it and just stack the filters and you wouldn't need additional ND filters included to bring up the price of the other filters. Filter stacking would be a really interesting concept on these small cameras and it can be done, but it would be great if you could use these ND filters without needing to use these lenses to begin with. So if you only had one set of ND filters that were compatible with all of your other lenses, that would be a huge value add and I would absolutely love running those filters. What do you guys think of these lenses? Will you be picking them up? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other videos and share them with a friend. If you didn't enjoy this video, share it with someone you don't like. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.